Number 41. Determine the bond order of each member of the following groups and determine which member of each group is predicted by the molecular orbital model to have the strongest bond. Okay, so basically they, we have three uh, diatomic atoms here. We have H2, we have H2+, plus, and then we have H2-. minus, And we just have to figure out what's the bond order for each of them. Well, the bond order always comes from a molecular orbital configuration, which is getting down to this stuff down here. But before we do that, these molecular orbital configurations have to do with uh, valence electrons. So let's pick the first one. And we're going to just find out how many valence electrons H2 has. So maybe I'll put H2 in the middle here. So H2, right, we have a hydrogen, and hydrogen is in group one, so that's important to know. Maybe I'll say, okay, we're in group one. You could know this as group 1A or group one, right? Generally, it's just group one, so we'll just use that. But that means that for each hydrogen, you have one valence electron. So I have one val, so I'll just put one valence electron. Um, but now, I have two hydrogens. So I just have to take that one and times it by two to get my total number of valence electrons. And for H2, I have a total of two valence electrons. Okay. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to figure out which one of these two templates are we going to be using for H2. So it goes by the group number. And since we did say that we were in group one, we are going to pick the group one's general template. The reason between these two molecular configurations is due to SP mixing. Some elements have a different configuration, but for groups one, two, three A, four A, and five A, we'll choose this one. So I'm just going to take the first one and bring it up for now. And then I'm going to just get rid of all the other stuff. So we don't need this one. So bye-bye. And we're going to say that this is going to be H2. Okay. But now let's just make it H2's own. So you see these blue highlighted parts. This is now going to be filled in by the element hydrogen. The question is, is hydrogen going to be the 1s? Or, and the, well, there's no such thing as a 1p, but is it going to be like 2s and 2p, 3s, 3p, or just the 1s? Well, this goes by the period that H2 is in. Now, we did say that H2 was in group 1, but H2 is also in period 1 as well. So, 1s all around. So, 1s orbital, the 1s orbital, technically these would be the 1ps, but that does not exist. So for hydrogen, I don't even have to consider the reds here. So we made it pretty easy. Now all we have to do is just throw in the electrons into our molecular orbital configuration. Now this, remember, is a sigma bond, and this is a bonding orbital because there's no star. Antibonding is the stars. And each molecular orbital, you get two total valence electrons. So in this case... What's the number that's going to be in the top here? Well, I need to put in two total, and each molecular orbital can only have two, so that's done. Technically, this one would be zero for H2, because I can only have a combined total of two electrons. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to now split this down the middle, and I guess give myself a little bit of room for actually before I split it down the middle I just want to make sure that I have the actual bond order equation so let's do that now because right after you find a bond order or actually right after you find a molecular configuration you can then find a bond order bond orders are easy because the formula is this the bond order is just basically the number of bonding electrons minus the number of antibonding electrons divided by two. So in our case, the bond order would be something minus something divided by two. 
Just look at the ones that have stars and don't have stars. This molecular orbital does not have a star next to it, so that's a bonding orbital. Those are your bonding electrons. The antibonding ones are the ones that have the stars next to it, like this one. So in this case, I have two bonding electrons and zero antibonding because there's no electrons here. So maybe what I can do is I'll just pull this up and now let's just do the math. Bond order, whoop, maybe I'll do that. Bond order for the H2 one, two minus zero was two divided by two, which is a bond order of one. Okay, now in order to determine which one is the, what they say, the strongest bond, we have to find the bond order for H2 plus and H2 minus. So now I'm going to just strip the sides away. And this is going to get a little bit easier because we laid the framework down here. So I'm going to do H2 plus and then H2 minus. Now just know that the plus and the minus means that you plus one and minus one, right? And remember what those electron or the charges mean. Plus one means that you lost one electron. So since I already laid down the framework here, I can just copy and paste just the molecular orbital configuration. And now I'm going to say that this would be a plus one. And remember, if you lose one electron, you had two. So now you're down to one. So I get rid of this guy, and my new number is a 1 here. And then we do the same formula, bonding minus antibonding. So let's see, bond order here would be equal to something minus something divided by 2. Bonding now is 1, and antibonding is 0. So bonding is 1, antibonding is 0. Let's figure this out. Bond order equals 1 minus 0 is 1 divided by 2, which is a half, or you could say 0 0.5. No units for bond order, by the way. They're just numbers. Okay, so I have a 1, a 0.5, and now let's see what this one is. I'm going to take the original, the one without the charge, and now I'm going to add the one electron because now I'm in a negative one. So I gain one electron, but I can't take this and turn it into a three because remember each orbital has a max of um, two. So I have to go to the next one and I can get rid of this now and say that the new number here is a one. And now when I do my bond order, My bond order equals something minus something else divided by two. Bonding is still two, so I have two bonding electrons, but now I have one antibonding, because that's the one with the star. So let's do it up. Bond order equals two minus one is one. So divided by two. So 1 divided by 2, once again, is 0.5. And here are all of your bond orders. So you have H2 plus 1 having a bond order of a, a half. H2 has a bond order of 1. And the other one has a bond order of a half. And just know that the strongest bond is always the highest bond order number. So that's the key there. So basically, now you're just ranking them. So whichever one has the highest bond order, that's always going to be the strongest bond. So since one beats out halves, H2 is the strongest bond. And that is the final answer. There you go. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. 
and I look forward to helping you with further questions. Good luck on those tests and quizzes, and I'll speak to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.